Hello and welcome to ExcelMasterSeries.com. Today we're going to show how to use the Excel histogram to analyze your Twitter follower acquisition program. Now suppose you've been keeping track of how many new Twitter followers all of your accounts pick up every day. And you've been recording them on an Excel spreadsheet just like this. And here's April's results and down below are May results. Now suppose you wanted to compare the results from April to the results from May to find out if your Twitter follower acquisition program has gotten better. Well, it's pretty tough to eyeball this Excel spreadsheet to make that determination. Now, the best tool that you can easily use to quickly evaluate whether your follower acquisition program has gotten better or worse is the Excel histogram. Now before we show you how to use the Excel histogram to analyze your Twitter campaign, you need to know what is a histogram and how do you make a histogram in Excel? So first, let's describe the histogram. Today, we're going to show how to create a histogram in Excel. Well, what is an Excel histogram? An Excel histogram is a chart that separates a large number of measured objects into smaller groups of objects that are similar to each other by whatever was measured. And groups in an Excel histogram can be arranged two different ways. First, they could be lined up according to the size of the objects in the group, that is, according to the scale of the measurements that were taken, or they can be lined up Pareto style, in other words, lined up according to the number of objects in each group. Let's take a look at examples of both styles. Here we have data from state universities, student populations from each of the state universities, and let's make histograms with both examples. And here's a histogram with the groups lined up according to the size of the objects in the group. Smaller schools are in the groups on the left, and as you go to the right, the schools are larger. The first group has 20 schools in it, and they are schools with populations of 30, up to 30,000. The second group has 10 schools, their populations from 30,000 to 50,000, and so on. As you go from left to right, the groups have schools with larger and larger populations. And here's a histogram Pareto style. The largest group with the largest number of schools is on the left. Second largest group with 10 schools, population 30 to 50,000. Third largest group, also 10 schools. And we can see the uh, cumulative chart in that pink line right there. And we can see that 80% of the schools fall into the first three bars. Let's show how to create an Excel histogram with groups lined up according to the size of the object in the group. That is the first histogram that we looked at. So back to the data. We see the data here is state universities and the student populations once again. And the first step we have to do is create the group sizes. Excel calls that the bins. First group is schools from 1,000 to 30,000 students. Second group is 30,000 to 50,000. 50,000, 70,000, and so on. So we create that little chart right there. Now we go to Tools, Data Analysis, and this is Excel 2003. Histogram, hit OK. Now we're going to input the input range from the student population chart. So select everything that's yellowed, including the student population label. Select all of that, and then hit this small square in the dialog box to go back to the main dialog box. And make sure you select labels because we selected student population. Now we're going to select the bin ranges. And that will be the lower end of each bin. What's yellowed here, we're going to select that. And now we're going to select the output range. That will be the upper left hand, the cell that's the upper left hand corner of that output, where it will start. And notice that the checkbox next to Pareto is not checked. We're not making a Pareto chart. We're grouping the groups according to the size of the object student populations. And here's the first part of that output. I've colored it tan. And we see the bins. This, the uh, groups are arranged according to the student populations. And there's the cumulative uh, curve as well. well. Let's make that a little bit more readable. If you left or right click on the x-axis and hit format axis, Go select alignment, and we'd like to make those labels on the x axis, the x axis go up and down. So check that until that goes all the way down to negative 90. Hit OK, and you'll see those labels are now vertical, make it a little bit easier to read. One more thing: once again, right-click and hit Format Axis, 
hit scale, and each one of those squares should be a one in there, so you have one label per bar. Let's take a look at how to use the Excel histogram to analyze your Twitter follower acquisition program. Now suppose that you've been keeping track of all of your new followers every day. You've added up all the new followers from all of your Twitter accounts and you've put them into an Excel spreadsheet just like this. Here's for the month of April. Each day you have your new followers and we'd like to compare that to the month of May. You've done the same thing for May. Now it's pretty hard to eyeball this but if you put it into a histogram, as we'll see, it makes for a very easy comparison. So let's go ahead and make that histogram. The first step was to create the bin ranges, as we just did before. And the bin ranges are the upper and lower limits of each group. The bins, as they're called in Excel. Let's go ahead and make that histogram right now. So tools, data options, histogram. OK, and remember, this is Excel 2003. So now we're putting in the input range for the data and include the label followers added and all of the yellow highlighted data there and we want to make sure labels checkbox is checked we're putting in the lower ends of the bin ranges all the yellow highlighted data there and now we just want to check chart output it's not a Pareto chart and now we're going to select the upper left hand corner of where the output will be starting and if we hit OK now remember this is a chart that divides the groups up by the size of the objects in the group. And here's the output. We move that histogram graph over there. And let's go ahead and resize that, that chart so we can see it a little bit easier. Do a few other things to it too. So we grab the handles and uh, squish it in a little bit. And then make it a little taller. And one more thing we want to do, we want to have those labels on the x-axis to be vertical. It makes it easier to read. So right-click on that, Format Axis, then go to Alignment, and hit that spinner dial until you get negative 90 on there, and then go ahead and hit, hit OK. And you'll see, the, uh, you'll see we have the chart there, and it's a pretty even bell-shaped curve right in the middle. Well, let's make the same thing for May and see what May's chart May's histogram looks like. So once again, we go ahead and create the bin ranges. And let's go ahead and do the whole thing. And there's the May chart right there without showing every step as we just did. So let's drag that May chart up, put it right next to the April chart, and take a look at it. And stretch it out so they're the same size by the handles. Okay, now we can see the April chart is up top, May chart is on the bottom. We can see that very definitely. Uh, our Twitter acquisition program has gotten worse in the month of May. It's shifted over to the lower end. So it's definitely got worse. Easy to see with histograms. So if you'd like to be an Excel statistical master, check out www.excel master series. And there you'll find the four manual series called the Excel statistical master. It's only 1995. 400 pages of MBA level instruction. Complete MBA business course. Okay, thank you very much and goodbye.